friends, welcome to our picnic on the fringe. You've already had a biscuit. I'm afraid I've broken the pattern, haven't I? No, that's Which all right. replicates the compass that the man is painting onto the roundabout. Oh, it does there. somewhat, yeah. I mean, because mm. it's, it's faded a little bit, he's just, uh, he's just topping it up. Is it an old he? one? I didn't know whether it was brand or it was a new one. No, I think uh, it's been there for as long as I've been. Okay. Co- I mean, that's only a few years. I'm, okay. not, <laughs> I'm not a fringe veteran by any means. <laughs> how, I mean, how many years have you been coming? My no. first fringe was 90... Well, as a, as a um, performer, my first one was 96, when I did one heat of So You Think You're Funny. Right. Um, 97, I was in the Open Mic Awards final. I don't think they exist anymore, the Open Mic Awards. Um, 98, I did the Comedy Zone. 99, I did my first hour. Uh-huh. And then I did another hour the following year, or was it two years later? 2003 was my last show for a while, and then I came back in 2010. Right, so you had a had a massive break in the middle there. Yeah, oh, massive. Small children. Mm, oh, I see. I see. But in that time, did your act change considerably, or it definitely um, tightened up and hardened and became a bit more polished and you I know see. kind of time time worn. Yeah, mm. <laughs> in a good way, hopefully. But uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, that, I think it's inevitable, isn't it? Because it's a reflection of where you're at as a as a person. Mm. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it is. I mean, it's a almost a character isn't it would you yes. describe it as a character no it is it, you're right it is almost and that it can be uncomfortable sometimes not quite sure whether I'm saying things ironically or saying things that I really mean and I switch back and forth mm. well, and, and I'm not sure the audience can be expected to understand entirely <laughs> either and I suppose I want to have my cake and eat it but um, yes it is borderline yeah mm. well I think because Stuart Lee talks about Stuart Lee the man and Stuart Lee who's on stage and they're yeah. both they're, I think they're both performers, but eventually you've been on stage so much. Yeah, I would say with him, I think in a sense he's being a little bit disingenuous, although probably knowingly so as well, because I think he's he is definitely trying to have his cake and eat it. I think he does believe pretty much everything he says. Right. But he's just getting away with a bit more than he would say <laughs> by separating those things. I mean, he said that, for instance, when he had to go about Michael McIntyre, you know, and then said that mm. that's truly the character saying. <laughs> I'm not sure I believe it. I mean, I think the point of a character act, really, if you look at somebody like Al Murray, the pub landlord, Absolutely. the pub landlord says things that are exactly the opposite of what Al Murray believes to be the case. He says mm-hmm. things in which you are invited to speculate as to what the real agenda is that's going on here, why has he developed this hatred of the French or whatever. Mm. And, and so it's definitely a character, you know, and then at the other extreme you get people like Michael McIntyre who are just kind of completely openly, you know, this is my life, this is what it's like, these are the thoughts that go on in my head. And, and it's difficult. Say, and yeah. then some of us do try and say things ironically, in a way of kind of putting out an idea that's kind of appalling, but is sort of recognisable at the same time. You know? <laughs> it's that middle ground that's tricky, yeah. But I think a lot of people, a lot of people fall into that because you can't be completely you on stage. No, you have to be at least a heightened version of yourself. You have to be more exaggerated. And if you are a character, if you go, the more you go down the character route in a funny way, it helps you to improvise because you can think to yourself, what would the character say or do in this mm. situation when you're bantering with the audience? You you know what the character would say because he's a he's usually a simpler animal than you are mm. whereas if you are being yourself then you are always wary of exposing some aspect of yourself <laughs> that you, you didn't want to you know? so it's nice to have a, yeah, a character to kind of yeah. semi relax a shield into. of irony I think uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you can always say it's irony if, if yeah. anyone questions but what you they do. will the audience will know if you're pushing your luck too far definitely. <laughs> they can sense it yeah, yeah I mean a lot of you know crowds you know, Jimmy Carr, uh, Frankie Boyle, those kind of acts who, who say were far more bleak and, uh, and, and uh, distressing, you know, quite disturbing kind of repeated images of rape and necrophilia and paedophilia mm-hmm. and so on, which I never, you know, go anywhere near. But I suppose you could say the stuff I've sort of, you know, toy with is, is equally offensive in its own way. But anyway... I mean, they definitely use the idea of irony, and this is just something I'm talking about. But I don't think that would be if something. If you were, if you were, yeah, if you were offended by it, I don't think you'd buy that for a second. You know, <laughs> you feel in your gut whether you're offended or not, and then you know. yeah, yeah. I think the, the lines are definitely. It's very. It's a very different beast with with those sorts of very harsh yeah. one-liners, isn't it? Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's a total kind of. Some people are comfortable with what it. What they're doing um, is basically exploring the extent to which a joke construction can overcome your sentimental 
defences and objections to an idea, you know, whether or not you can be made to laugh before your, the other part of your brain that goes, no, 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 that's <laughs> not acceptable, you know, has kicked in and mm. shut the gate. And I'm so glad that that exists, but I am totally understand people who hate it. I, yeah. I think there's well, no shame worth, in that. I find it tiring. I mean, I like a 20-minute set of that. I went to see Jimmy Carr uh, live uh, a couple of years ago, and I couldn't take the whole show. I just, I just found it relentless. You know, too much, to yeah. In the interval. But he's very, very good at, at, at writing those kind of jokes. But actually, like most comedians, I always think, you know, the full-length show is a hell of a strain on anyone's patience, you know, and anyone's <laughs> appetite for one thing. It's like having a three-course meal of just beef, isn't it, or something? Do you so know what I mean? Do, yeah, so do you think that the hour format is almost quite problematic, in a the way? The hour is not too bad, but when you go on tour, you do an hour and a half with a uh, you know, quarter-hour interval in the middle. Um, and the hour is quite... I mean, there's a generally recognised dip, usually at around the 40-minute mark, and you normally have to do something to overcome that. Last time I was here, I handed out a bowl of M&Ms, which I might start doing again. <laughs> So little, have you not got a little bit of a sugar rush for the audience <laughs> gets you to the, the finishing line? It's know. a great idea, but you haven't got something like that. This I year. might well bring it back in, but I've had to mm. be honest. This year's show has come up. It's been a little bit rawer. Last time I was here in 2010, I was doing at least half of my hour that I was doing was really club hardened and well tested and established material, and then the other half hour I developed to expand it to an hour. This time around, I really have written everything from scratch in the last few months. So it's it, this is the first time a lot of it's being done at all. Right. And I've brought extra elements in to bring it topically because it feels to me like the Olympics is something quite extraordinary that's happening for, for um, I don't know, possibly just for the people I talk to and, you know, talk about on Twitter and stuff. But it feels very... Like, this is an interesting time, you know, and I don't want to um, ignore all that stuff. So I've been working on the show... You know, quite fundamentally for the first week or so. Uh, Moving this about some routines have gone, some have come. And it's probably about time now that I start to think about, right, bowl of m and <laughs> and um, <laughs> possibly a little bit of furniture and that sort of thing, you know. So you didn't have the previews stage? I had many. previews in London. I did about seven or eight previews, and they were really useful. But again, I've got at least an hour and a half material that I, that I want, that I'm selecting. I've got a squad, you know, mm. and I'm changing the team quite a bit every night. <laughs> and, um, and that's fun and it's exciting, but it is occupying my thoughts more than, as I say, the slightly more gimmicky aspects of it, which um, it's about time I started to give some thought to the evidence. Yeah. <laughs> it's needed. It's an important aspect. It you is. Know. Well, it, you do g- genuinely have to have something somewhere between 30 and 40 minutes. You have to do something, even if it's just um, a loud bang, you know, <laughs> and then you start again. But you have to break the sense that the audience have that they've peaked you know they've laughed enough at this kind of thing now and it's you know <laughs> Adam Bloom the first time I saw him do an hour which was about you know 96 or 97 he did a car trick at 40 minutes he was a good he's quite a good close up magician Adam yeah well certainly for one that isn't making his living out of it and, mm. um, and he did a car trick and then he went back to the jokes it was great you know it was a really <laughs> And Sean Locke used to say, yeah, you know, it's about this point, I wish I had some sort of skill. I could, <laughs> you know, I could do something. But that was almost Sing enough to say that. Yeah, or, exactly, yeah. yeah. Just acknowledge it. What I did last night, to be honest, was um, lift my hat from my chair to reveal that I had a glass of wine under it. And um, just to sort of cheers and, you know, add a quick chat with the audience, because I don't do much chat. And that might be enough as well. But it's quite nice if there's something for them as well. Mm, yes. I mean, these rooms are quite stuffy as a rule. Yeah, I mean, because well, what room know. are you in? You're it's in... called Pleasance Beneath. It's got air con, so it's not too bad, but I'm certainly sweating a lot more than I do on a mm. comedy club stage. Is it 55 or something, is it? Or? Oh, it's 102. 102? Okay, yeah. so uh, actually for a fringe venue. Yeah, it's... no, it's a perfectly decent mm. size, yeah. It's mm. lovely, actually, because it's selling out every night now, um, which is great. I've no I, I mean, if the if the excess capacity, you know, if the, if the excess demand that isn't being met is huge, then obviously <laughs> I'd be annoyed, but I yeah. think it's nice if you can just... Mm-hmm. reach that point where well, you're in demand you well know. you've got some extra shows haven't you yeah a couple All re- well I mean already I yeah mean, it's quite before a- we got up here actually oh really yeah oh, okay yeah. That's, a, that's a great way to be yeah, it's a good start yeah. yeah and I've never had that before so mm. clearly something is going in the right direction yeah. I mean was it McIntyre's boost that uh, maybe or- funnily enough I did one mock the week as well and I didn't have a particularly the, every time you do the mock the week for the first time you don't you know you don't steal the show as a rule but um, that seemed to have as big an impact as McIntyre in terms of people the next people day kind of going, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's the immediacy, isn't it? If people yeah. have seen you recently, yeah. that's what they'll remember. Absolutely. Even if you've done big stuff in the past, you yeah. know, it's, it's time. Anyway, what, what is your show and when is it? It's called Friendly Fire. It's at 9.30 in the Pleasance Courtyard. Okay. Uh, it's called Friendly Fire because when they asked me back in March what the show was called, I'd just written a tweet which said... I'm going to see a movie later called Friendly Fire. Should kill a couple of hours. 
<laughs> and uh, I was quite pleased with that as a joke. But um, so I just went for friendly fire. It doesn't really mean anything. I did see one review which seemed to be irked by the fact that it wasn't a show which was basically attacking Americans, which I think is what they thought it was going to be. But, uh, well, they came in with the expectation yeah, and let yeah. them down. So I should, I should make that clear, perhaps. But yeah, it just feels to me like um, quite a good description of what most stand up is, you know. It's like saying, just tease it, friendly oh, fire. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming to the You're picnic. I mean, it's, I mean, it's only biscuits. One biscuit, but that's fine. That's yeah. all right. I mean, it's not sandwiches. I'm on a big health kick at the moment, so oh, I don't want to scoff loads well, of biscuits. Well, you're cycling I'm for, cycling for a start. and I'm going straight from here to the gym. Oh, my God. I'm going to try and um, see what I can get up to on the treadmill. Today. And you'll keep that up for the whole festival? Absolutely, yeah. 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 I, I started before I got here. I've been doing a, fit, a proper fitness program. Oh, well done. I am 47 years of age. <laughs> And you only have two choices at this age. You either go forwards or you go backwards. <laughs> well, good luck with it. Thanks, Thanks very so much, much for coming. Cheers. Cheers. Take care. Mm-mm.